welcome dear friends. So far we had such interesting discussions on the aspects and advantages of digital transformation of governance. Everything looked so rosy, however it is not. Yes, we come to the sting in the tail session called as exploring and resolving the issues for implementing digital transformation in governance. Welcome to session 15th of this particular stream. The session would give us a look at various kind of challenges which all of us are aware of intuitively and through the vast experience which all of you have. However, this session aims to present these issues in what I call as a GIST framework, governance challenges, infrastructural challenges, socio-economic challenges and technological challenges. But just giving challenges or problems is not the right way to approach any situation. Hence, this session would also try to give some answer to these problems. This is all what we cover in this particular session. By and large, the digital transformation journey of the departments aims to empower the common citizen. It is putting on speed track the governance processes to ensure that the digital drive converts into something meaningful. However, it has opened up a plethora of challenges such as who controls data, how the information is utilized, how do we tackle socio-economic diversity, how to look into e-waste aspects so that clean cities and green cities are generated. The availability of any time, anywhere, the internet possibilities have also opened up Pandora box for cyber criminals and hackers. The risk of our valuable and sensitive data in the cyberspace is so high that you never know who attacks you, a hacker, a dissatisfied employee, a criminal or a corporate spy looking at my valuable data. We would look at each of these challenges very pragmatically. First and foremost is the governance aspect of technology. Governance aspect of technology is all about how do we manage technology, how do we manage the data generated by technology, how do we manage the hierarchy and the bureaucracy behind the governance of such structures. So there are several aspects to it. The prime most aspect or the challenge in governance is in terms of business models for implementation of digital transformation. Technology or the expertise comes from majority of the time industry or market or startups and the collaboration or the partnership model could itself be the at least heel of the whole process. Are there rugged SLAs? Would private objective really dilute the governance objective. All these aspects are a big challenge and could be a big hurdle in successful implementation of digital transformation. To manage all this, whatever we try to achieve, remember we talked about digital transformation trying to achieve a complete overhauling. So whatever digital transformation is trying to achieve, would it be acceptable in the eyes of law? Is my regulatory framework robust enough to accommodate the changes and is my regulatory framework proactive enough to address the related issues? Governance could also do lot of surveillance through the data lying with them. When I say governance, I also include governance, public bodies, agencies and even private parties who are capturing this data. The moment this valuable data is available in hands other than the citizen himself or herself, we could be spied on by anybody who has the data. They profile me better than what I know about myself using AI and machine learning algorithms. Another governance challenge is all about procurement. There is so much money lying in IT infrastructure designing and development and deployment. From whom do we buy, whether we buy at the right price or not, whether our structure, infrastructure would be responsive to the changes and upgradable, etc. is another issue. Another governance challenge is actually ensuring that the departments talk to each other. The interoperability in terms of people's interoperability with each other, departments interoperability with each other is also a big challenge, especially in a bureaucratic and developing country like ours. 
The second challenge is infrastructure challenge or the category of challenges infrastructure challenges. In infrastructure challenges procurement of technology infrastructure is one aspect that we would cover in T also. However, here we are more concerned about lack of infrastructure audits, lack of availability of multi channel receiving cost constraints, lack of quality of infrastructure, proprietary vendor lock in, lack of integrated services and many more. Other set of obvious challenges are our socio cultural challenges. We find in a developing and diverse country like ours which is so beautiful, but it also presents us challenge of digital divide in terms of accessibility by people who can afford and people who can't afford, people who are empowered to use technology, people who are not empowered to use technology like illiterate or maybe on the wrong side of gender etc. Social cultural challenge is also about mindsets, about people not willing to change to accept new formats of systems. It is also about information or awareness not reaching unto them about the availability of such system. It is also about certain geographies which are so alienated from the main uh, setup. It is also about lack of trust of people about digital technologies, technological challenges. The last part of the pyramid is most important. We are using internet as the highway to deliver all our services in digital transformation. We are using emerging technologies, so many of IoT devices which are plethora of sensors. We are using robots, we are using wearable devices, we are using so many other implementation aspects of technology. What happens if internet suddenly goes out? What happens when these devices go obsolete? So we create lot of e-waste or non-green waste. We create a possibility of the total system disruption if internet blackout happens. We make ourselves so vulnerable because we are putting such sensitive information even if encrypted, even if on public private clouds open to hackers and other corporate spies or countries which are not friendly countries. We are putting our trust on artificial intelligence which could permit or could undertake unforeseen devices or decisions. So we are exposing ourselves to AI, ML and robots throughout. We also should look into in this technology aspect cyber vulnerability which comes by using a device and unwittingly deleted everything because of lack of knowledge. So technological challenges are several and need to be addressed first and foremost. If I have to address technological challenges first and foremost, what do we do? How do we handle it? First and foremost is build up digital capabilities. We will talk about this in our next session also. We should ensure we are creating an entire capable empowered ecosystem right from citizens to policy makers to implementers to bureaucrats to uh, project heads who are totally updated and aware of the latest trends. We should also ensure that our infrastructure is incorporating fellowship programs and design of uh, university programs or school education which is totally responsive to the new trends of technology. All the public organizations should handhold with NGOs and civil bodies to ensure that digital challenges or technological challenges are adequately addressed at all levels. For doing that we need centralized leadership, we need clear communication of policies and goals, we need self learning modules which are accessible by public, we need to use regional languages more, we need to have agile and fast moving responsive policy systems. The socio-economic challenges which is primarily based on the layer of digital divide can be resolved if we focus on minority groups, background groups, disabled communities more and that could be so beautifully done through PMG Disha which we had talked in a, one of our sessions in the past. We should also bring in a lot of transparency in the functioning 
so that the trust element is assured. Regional languages need to be looked into very seriously for development and deployment of new systems. Last but not the least, there should be flexibility in budgets. The need for DSS is very high to ensure interoperability. We should also have a lot of collaboration with startups so that innovation becomes the main ruling force so that test beds can incubate freely while collaborating with startups and private sector. All these solutions would be futile if center and state do not take the responsibility of bringing in a new wave of change in the entire landscape of the country. Center needs to build architecture, they need to definitely roll out digital service standard, they need to foster the ecosystem as I said, uh, there should be a need to establish best practices, we should have test beds to check the pilots, we should nurture the enablers, the leaders and people who are capable. So capability and not just induction at the time uh, we started our career should be the main focus of the center to employ people who can make difference in digital transformation process. States have their own responsibility, states need to interact with the center, pick up those best practices and contextualize or localize to their own regional requirements. States should ensure replication of best practices, states should, because they are the closest through local governments to the mainstream of citizenry should sensitize their people, they should institutionalize these processes and ensure that co-creation is undertaken at every point of contextualization, adherence to DSS and other aspects set up by the center is the responsibility of the state. It is a joint journey, digital transformation would not be successful or could be just a pipe dream in case center state, local, industry, startups and citizen do not hold each other's hand in this beautiful journey. Thank you. We are almost at the close of our stream and we would close it by a very interesting discussion on upskilling in our next session. Till then, Jai Hind.